That's what the Lord has for us. It's amazing. I'm uh, Tuesday, March 14th, is church board meeting at 7 p.m. And then uh, April 19th to the 21st is our district convention here in town. And we will have a, a p.m. worship service this evening if you're uh, available. We'll be here. Uh, this morning, uh, we still have some that are traveling and some that are away from us, but I expect that sickness seems to be passing and people will be coming home and we'll be there. Uh, back at Cold Forest here pretty soon. I uh, want to welcome you here today, and I'm just looking excitedly to what, what uh, the Lord will have to say to and through us today. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your watch care over us, our family, our sending families, not just here in Yakima, but wherever they might be. We thank you for the things, the answers to prayers that, that have already occurred. The answer to prayers that have been made and the prayers that we don't even know uh, how to give utterance to them yet, but your spirit will show us how the answers are those that will come in the future. Guide and direct and bless us. Anoint the word and give you the praise as you do that. Uh, Lord, light upon us and we'll just give you a praise as you do that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Any birthdays or anniversaries today? Your birthday is April 10th? We missed Dawn yesterday yeah. too. Is she here? I don't see Dawn here today. No. I see this Dawn. Yes, yesterday we had we celebrated Kathy's mom's 90th birthday. Oh, it good. just wore her out. <laughs> I told them that we had a pretty good sized group. Angus counted about 50 people. There came. was, yeah. And I told her, when we get to the 100th, we'll fill the place. Because 90, <laughs> you know, Mike's dad, grandpa, told us how to live 100 years. He said, live 99 years really careful and get to that six month of your 99 and six, and then take it, then just relax because you're going to make 100. And he lived, did he live to be 100, didn't he? Yeah. Well, that's great advice. Yeah, just be really <laughs> careful for 99 years and a half. <laughs> okay. And you can do what you want for the last six months, you're going to make it. You mean you eat all the bacon you want after that? Yeah. Well, no, you always get it anyway, but at 99 years, what are you going to do? Change your diet. You're only 99 and a half. You can't eat that for breakfast. Well, you know, you always have an outlier. Uh, doesn't mean that you should do this, <laughs> but you always have an outlier in, in life. Uh, R.D. Richardson and Faye, they attended here for quite a while, back many years ago, and he lived into his close to 100. And his diet was farmland bacon, um, probably about half a pack a day, Marvin, and a banana cream pie once a week. So hmm. I don't know if that's uh, what we all should be doing. Exactly. But he, he, made, he, he, he got to close to 100 doing that. Yeah, so, you know. And how come, how come cows don't die of cholesterol? That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Let's uh, sing happy, yeah, happy, happy birthday. Yeah, I have to do it again. Let's sing happy birthday to John. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Yesterday. I said, God bless you, and I was going to say, God bless you, too, so I kind of got stuck between God bless you and Don. But anyway, uh, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes. 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 So, at any rate, we do have some music today. Rita has been sent to play, and Keisha asked me last week, and she says, I would like to help out when there's an absence, so I'm available, and that happens to be today, so she's going to help us with the music today. And I've got the company. I need a goatee. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mic near you. Okay. Okay. I, I think if I used a mic, then I can like bring the house down. <laughs> uh, all right. I guess I don't really want to be in the center. I just. 
shows. So Pastor Angus said that he really wanted to do Be Thou My Vision. I said, I, I, my favorite is This Is My Father's World. And then I asked my daughter if she wanted to pick out a song. So she did, and I'd never sung it before, which is really fun. I, I like my new ones. So anyhow, we can, can we start with This Is My Father's World? Sure.
there's any prayer request. that you're picking up, pick up now and we'll pray for them. So sometime tomorrow at the end of the service, you can uh, bring your need here and uh, get plugged back in here. Robert got me a new cord that, and I unplugged it on purpose, Marvin, so. Um, if the kids are going to go, are the kids going to go? Is summer, where's summer at? Because half my sermon's about summer. Well, I can tell you. She is at the ice. She's at Eisenhower today. And Dawn, the reason she's there is she's a finalist for the Columbia Basin STEM, which is science, technology, and it is has to be completed on eight. Our teacher is there today for them to do the graphics. See, and I want to tell you, this is my problem with Summer. She doesn't say two words to Pastor Don, but my sister-in-law, who I hardly ever see, I was going to introduce her to Summer yesterday at the birthday party, and my sister-in-law told me the innermost secrets that Summer has. She had a long conversation about what she likes, what she does, and I go, who are you talking to? Summer? Yeah, she knew Karen, my sister-in-law Karen. She told me things about Summer I never do. I only thought she had three or four words to me at all. It's, she just had a blab fest with her. But I want you to know, today's message, I, I just so pray that the Holy Spirit comes and you get to experience Him in a special way, because I did. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that your spirit would enter into our midst, that we would be moved by your spirit, that we would be touched in a way that we've never been touched before. We pray your blessing now in Jesus' name. The, I've rewritten my sermon four times, Angus, so it has to be the Lord. So I'm going to be careful not to do everything that I have on my computer. Things are not always the way they appear. If you weren't involved or you didn't spend any time watching the Asbury Revival in the two weeks that it went on, you really missed a touch from the Lord. And what angered me this week was watching all of the religious people telling the people that that's not the real Jesus. There was a young girl that came out of the Revival meeting and she couldn't stop laughing. And the man says, well... That's not the real Jesus. You didn't see him. Angus, that girl was laughing. And you know, the Holy Spirit was manifesting himself in each of their needs, right where they were at. And you know what, Angus? I don't care if that ain't the Jesus he thinks it is. The Holy Spirit met with her. And that is the thing that scares the socialist community because they think God is the government. The thing that they can't handle is Number one, you being led by the Holy Spirit to do what God commands you to do, and then a church full of people who avail themselves to the Holy Spirit and agree in a one accord and go and do the things that God called them to do, and you're not going to run headlong into the government. You're going to be doing the thing that God asks you to do, and if they don't like it, they're going to try to chase you down. Follow the ministry of Jesus. He wasn't brought here for the religious people. Well, then... Since I was on all of those people who tried to diagnose what a revival is, because you'll know my definition of a true Holy Ghost revival is you meeting in your heart with the Spirit of Christ and Him setting you aside to do His bidding. That is the highest form of religion, to worship God from the inside, not on a mountain in Jerusalem, but in the hearts of of the believers who are consecrated to him. And one of the cycles that happened at the revival, it, to preach really good, you have to spit when you talk. And you can't do that when your mouth dries out. One of the things that I'll tell you about the clue of the revival is, wait, should I move to that or should I just go on with how mad I am at the... I saw a video of the five worst preachers, heretics, in the United States living and preaching today. Some of them wanted your money. Some of them wanted your attention. Some of them faked healing. They were, they were the initials of the first ones, well, his name was Benny something. 
And then there was these other, that they're all about money. Angus and I take a housing allowance because we knew to start a church this small we wouldn't be able to pay us our medical bills and our pastoral salaries and a housing allowance also. We tried to make that housing allowance enough so that someday you could really hire a pastor, put both of our housing allowance together, and hopefully that would pay a pastor someday. Someday when we're gone, because I'm going to live forever, but it's just not going to be here. I, I thought of that, Angus, as I was thinking about these big-time preachers that got yachts and Lear jets and that's not Jesus. Amen? If it is, you better leave right now. Because it's not going to be a religious service. This is going to be a service about the leadership of the Holy Spirit. People who will do what God asks them to do, even if there isn't this or that or the other thing, to make it happen. And so I was angry with those. But let me spell out. The revival that took place there is that this is the formula for the renewal of the people, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The word was preached, the word was received, and the people responded in prayer. And God responded in the outpouring of His Spirit, and they went back and erupted into spontaneous praise. That's what took place over and over and over again until the Holy Spirit was on them. And when you and I talk to people, that, not in person, I have people I follow that walked in the back door, drove for four hours to get there, walked in the back door and said, Holy is God, and I don't want to stay here too long because someone else needs to come in too. And he left. He only spent 30 minutes in the sanctuary because he didn't want to stop someone else from experience in the Holy Spirit in the room. The Holy Spirit lights upon a room, in case you've not been there, in such a way that you can almost cut the air with a knife. His presence is so heavy and so lighted upon there. There wasn't an ex people speaking in tongues all over the place. No, they were speaking with their God. And if they did that on their own, that's their business. But the Holy Spirit came into the room. And so when people came in the back door, I am that I am spoke to their hearts. So much scripture. Oh, they didn't do the eight verses to be saved. They came in and experienced, I am. And I am met their need. And they came forward and confessed their sins. And people who didn't know they had sins, when you come into the presence of the Holy Spirit, you are a sinner. You are inadequate. <laughs> and I want you to go to the gates of hell like I did. And you'll find out everything didn't confess yet there have been times in your life that you forgot to say sorry probably but when you experience God you are inadequate you got to say you're sorry just because everybody say that with me say you're sorry I'm sorry get used to it as long as we're on this earth we're going to have to do that occasionally because I don't even know I'm making you angry right now <laughs> but I'm going to keep going and so the Holy Spirit comes upon the crowd, and the Holy Spirit is in the room, and the, 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 out, on the, out on the foyer, people are getting, I've been here, I've seen it, people get saved out here in the parking lot, because when the Holy Spirit expresses himself that way, you want to know him better. You want to receive his spirit. You can try being religious all the time you want, and all of the smart preacher guys will try to talk you into a better Christianity. You can't have it. That's religion. That's religion. The Jews would have been number one on God's list had they been able to do it that way. Because they kept laws and laws and laws. If you could do it better, Jesus said you couldn't even handle the yoke the Pharisees put on you. I've come to bring a better way. A way where you are in tune and he still speaks in a still small voice and he convicts you, not your brother, not your sister. It's you as you accept him, as you allow him to move into your midst. They didn't, and, and I told Kathy, I said the hardest thing about that revival was shutting it down. Because God wasn't done yet. And, but we, we know that has to happen. Because you, you can't just 
You can't just eat and eat and eat and eat. There's too much salt on those french fries at McDonald's to eat them all the time. But I confess to you, I like them. I, 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 just, I, I just want you to know, I'm a friend. I don't get them often, and I tell them, no salt. And I get them <laughs> fresh that way. You know if you order no salt, you get fresh ones. You don't get the ones that have been in there all day. Things are not always the way we think they are. Because you don't live in the dimension that God lives in. We live in the here and now. We live in this dimension. But I want to tell you from personal experience, when you leave this dimension, time is no more. Space is no more. God works outside of time. Some people see a man's face looking to the right. Others people see an Eskimo looking in the other way. How many of you see both of those things? You see the Eskimo and you see the man's face. Okay. This, I'm not, there's no test, okay? I'm not going to grade you on this. You never know, because things are not always the way they appear. What do you mean, Karen? I just did this because I thought she'd be here, and I wanted you to see how much she's grown. We'll watch her over. <laughs> we took this picture. I've shown you this one before when she was here, but we took this picture because Angus came to me and said, Summer's really upset that you had Scotty's picture up there and everybody's picture, but not a good one of her. And so Kathy and I trapped her in the back there and said, give me a chance to get a picture of you. This is the fourth picture because none of them were good enough for her. We had, Kathy goes, well, I only have one. I said, because that's the only one she let us keep. She waited and they all looked, the, to me, they looked the same. Things are not always the way you would think they are. This is a picture of the barn across from our barn. This is a picture of my old barn that I grew up in. And I never broke a window in that barn. I was accused of it. I never did. Even though it was old, it was, uh, uh, you just didn't do that. We had a weather vane on top of the cupola, and I have a weather vane and a cupola on my barn now. And my barn is that design, not as big as this. This was huge. I figure that's a, a seven and a half foot door on this side that the horses went in and out when they were in the winter time. You would put the horses there on the right side. And on the other side used to sit an old Chrysler. The old barn was something that was all of the attraction to our property. When we had the, the uh, one of the family get in together, all of the other side of the family, the Scuts, the Rewalds, the Zoot horses, the only stories they had was about this barn. And I, you've seen this before, but I love this because as I was going through my papers, little Donnie Thompson's right in front of the barn, and I'm waving at a guy in an airplane flying around the house taking a picture, and my dad bought the picture, and that's me with the circle. That's me. Angus, I got that. I got that in my repertoire. Some of you don't believe it, but I want you to realize this. That is a ladder going up the height of that barn to the top, and I showed you the picture of the barn. I want you to know, it was tall. In the sixth grade, Stevie Sheldon and I walked up that ladder because, I'll show you, well, you, oh, you can't see him right now. Right now, there's an owl over on the, there's an owl right over there. You see a little barn owl? See him standing on that rafter? And to catch those pigeons at nighttime in the dark with a flashlight in your mouth, you had to walk on that, two by four, across, out to there to grab them with the other hand and hold on with this hand and put them in a bag because our teacher wanted pigeons. She was going to raise pigeons and we volunteered to get her some. So you would leave the ladder and walk on that two by four, holding on to the beams and reach down there and grab a pigeon. That just We just happened to have a, an owl there right then. But this one is a picture, when you go past that, you stand on this ledge and you get pigeons off of that row and pigeons off the top gable. So we stood on that platform right there in the dark, where am I at? I'm going, I messed up, help me. How did I do this, let's see. There, 
Anyway, you had to grab those and you had to stand on this. Maybe you can see it here. See that little platform on the top? That's a three board platform, so you know it had to be 12 by 12 by 12. They had to be that wide. Stevie Sheldon and I standing on this, one guy holding up on that and grabbing pigeons and putting it in the bag so we could go to school the next day with a bunch of pigeons for Mrs. Uh, well, it escapes me right now. Ida, come to me later. But anyway, I got her her pigeons. And I thought, man, it seems to me that we were crazy. The things are not always the way they seem. And this, I wanted to do this so you could hear my father roll over in his grave. And my mom is right now, if she knew I was doing this, would be awfully angry with me. But see, I'm Bill's boy. My job is to make you angry so that God can move you to do something right. He burnt the barn down. Yeah. By accident. By accident. Yeah, he didn't do it on. We, were, we would get spanked for breaking a window, you know. But he burned it down on Angus. Ow! I don't want you to see this because this is the fountain. Ladies, if you want to escape out that window in the ladies' bathroom, you can see the backside of water. You can get it. The sign is going to go just to the right of that. I have to do this backwards. Just right there is where the sign's going to go. And the sign will have, like, the birthday party yesterday. We can do that. Like, the next meeting, we can do that on that sign. It's going to be, it's going to be great. And we're, we're hovering in on that right now. And I want you to find this guy. No one has found this. I ran this a few years ago. No one has found this guy. I want you to find this guy and get the $50,000 because we need it to put the sign in, maybe. I don't know. The church can use the money somehow. But if you find this guy, let me know. This is the world champion, Sammy Henderson. We were fortunate enough to bring him into a wrestling camp for the boys. In 1998, he was the champion of the world. This is the poster that Josh had on his wall the whole time he grew up. Some people had Farrah Fawcett on the wall. He had Sammy Henson's picture on the wall. And we got to bring him into a camp. And he actually, Josh had uh, separated his arm, and he wanted to use Josh as his practice dummy. And Josh wanted to be his practice dummy, to be on the map with Sammy Henson, the world champion. And he made Josh cry. And Sammy goes, I'm so sorry that you didn't tell me he was injured. Because he breathed on him, because Sammy was that kind of guy. And I wanted to show you that move, because I'm going to show you this the way I would teach this in wrestling, this religious, the, 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 what we're doing today, I want to show it in the way that you can get it. My concept of wrestling is, at the beginning of the, and I've learned this over the years, is I'll come up with 23 different moves. I'll do like five moves if you're on the bottom, five moves if you're on the top, and five moves off your feet. And then I'll add some to that. And then the first middle school kid comes in to practice, they go, I can never do this. And I go, yeah, but I'm going to teach you them one at a time. And at first people go, well, that's stupid because nobody can be on that level of wrestling and know all those moves. This guy only used about six moves total. And I teach you all these, and here's the concept. I'm headed to something. Is I throw every move in the universe at my young wrestlers, and I want them to pick one in each position that they can do well and like. Because I, I showed Josh how to do a fireman's carry, and when we went to Hood River, we were the new kids there, and he already knew how to throw me, and he was only six, seven? He was six years old, and he was so afraid. I remember the tears in his eyes, he sat down and put his shoes on, looked around, and he started to cry, and he crawled up in my arms, and he goes, Dad, I'm scared. And I said, well, okay, son, let me fix this. I got him up, and I said, do you remember that move I showed you? Do it. He threw me over his head in front of the whole Hood River crowd. You know who was the man from 
uncle after that, Josh Thompson. He was the man that could do a throw in front of the whole world. Never used that move the rest of his life until the coach was penalizing him for basically being good. Anyway, he went out and stuck him against the state champion when he was an underclassman. And they got right in front of the coach. And the kid pushed, and he used that move. And I wasn't there to see it. And he flipped that guy on his back right in front of the coach because he was mad at the coach. Hardly ever used that move again. So anyway, I'm sharing some of this with Sammy Henson. And he said, well, that's ridiculous. See, Joshua is left-handed, but I taught him to wrestle right-handed so he could wrestle ambidextrously. And I was telling the coach that. I was telling Sammy that. And see, Adam, his advantage was he learned to wrestle an ambidextrous guy. So whatever way he went, he had his older brother was good in both directions. And Sammy looked at me and he goes, well, that's just stupid, coach. He said, what I do in every match I wrestle is I put this leg forward, and I always put this leg forward because I want you to take this leg. And I am the best one in the world at defending that leg. So I give you this leg so I will beat you. Because I know every move from a guy having my leg. Right there, he's going to win that. Believe it or not, he's going to win that. So we left that camp. Now mind you, I show them thousands of moves to find one you like to do. Because if they don't like to do it, you won't do it. If you don't like to apply the scriptures and the spirit to your life, you won't do it. So find the thing that delights your heart and please the Lord. And so Sammy goes, that's stupid, so we're going home in the car, in the suburban. Sammy goes, or Josh goes, man, Dan, I said, well, I told Josh, I guess. I said, I, I've been teaching you guys all wrong. I said, maybe I should just teach you one thing because I got tired of coaches making everybody wrestle like they did in high school. I think that's baloney. They got every coach that saw a move on a tape and they want every kid to do it that way. You are hammering round kids into square holes if you do that. Find what is your niche. Because that's really what the Holy Spirit wants to do with you, is find the thing that delights your heart so your joy can be filled to overflowing. Do that and do it with all your might. Fast forward. I don't know if I have a picture of it. I couldn't because Sammy has done, has done a, uh, hey, it's locked up, Mark. Yeah, he did. Sammy has taken them all offline because he got into the Olympics in, in uh, Australia. His opponent from Azerbaijan had wrestled him so many times. And he knew, what, he, what was he going to do? What was Sammy going to do? Right? He's going to give to the leg because I'm the best one in the world at defending that leg. So the Azerbaijan guy comes in and he fakes at this leg and Sammy throws it back like always. But John, he wasn't going for this leg. Guess what he did? He took this leg. Sammy Hansen loses the gold medal match by one point because he was buttonholed into one style. To one way of doing things. One, and, and you cannot find a picture of that anywhere online of him getting swayed by that move where he came in. I started teaching that move. If the kids would come in here and take this one, here and this one. So I think that what the Lord has showed me is true. I think that you need to pray and allow God the variety that He has out there that you could be proficient at, if it's reading the Bible, if it's praying, if it's helping others, if it's making peanut butter cookies, do that with all your might, with all your joy, and allow God to reveal himself to the world. Jesus is getting ready to leave the world. He's trying to get his disciples ready. And he says this, if you want to study this later, you can. You can watch the video. In John 16, he says, 
I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will put you in the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about it. I warned you about what's going on. I didn't tell you this from the beginning because I was still here with you because it's hard to imagine. He said, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? None of you ask me. Rather, you are filled with grief because I'm going to be gone. Woo-hoo. We're so selfish, aren't we? We're so se- you, Nobody asks me where I'm going, but, but you're just feeling sad because I'm not going to be here. I tell you the truth. It is good for me to go because I am going away. Unless I go away, here it is. There's the word. Advocate. The lawyer. The defender of your faith will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. You should have asked me where I'm going and why I'm going, but you didn't. You were worried about yourselves. And when he comes, he will prove the world is wrong. The world to be wrong about sin, wrong about righteousness, wrong about judgment, about sin, because some people don't even think there's any such thing as willfully disobeying the law of God because they don't know God. That's why the, the socialist uh, mindset wants to take away your God. Because if there is no God, there is no sin. There's no one to please. There's no one to direct you except them. And except us. You've got to realize there is sin. It is awful. Did you remember to pray for the people at sundown, the young people who are hooked on fentanyl, who don't know God? who don't know God, they're going to come out addicts. And they're going to go right back down the drain. People don't believe in sin is sin. And there are sinful people, folks, and I want to tell you, quit making excuses. It's sin. And about righteousness, because I'm going to the Father where you can't see me. There is a right. There is a wrong. There is a right relationship that you can have with an eternal God that loves you, that has a way for you. And I'm going to correct the world about judgment. The Holy Spirit will tell you, be ready. Prepare your hearts because there will be a day of reckoning. There will be a day of reckoning. I have told you much more to say to you, more than you can bear. But when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you. He will guide you. See, and I've told you this before, and I'll tell you this again. If you have to be manipulated by your pastor to be faithful, if you have to be manipulated by your pastor to give, it ain't Jesus. It's not Jesus. The Holy Spirit should give you unction and allow you to do that far and beyond. You should learn to give until it hurts, because you're going to find out it didn't hurt you at all. You need to give. So I told uh, somebody yesterday, I said, you need to give. You need to give. Not because God needs it, but because you need to give. You need to be giving. He will not speak on his own. I was glad the attorney came in right when I started this section because he's the advocate. If you have any legal problems, talk to Tim. Okay. There you go, Tim. I'm doing the advertising. It's free. Nothing costs money here. He will not speak on his word. He will only speak what he hears. And I will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So Jesus said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after that you'll see me again. So I'm going to go away for just a bit. Could have been speaking about the second time he left. But the first time when he was crucified, 
he spoke to them, and then he left for a little while. We like to think in Christendom, and you're free to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into what you think, but we like to believe that he went to loose the chains of those who were in bondage in Hades, the place of the dead, who prayed for his salvation, who prayed for his coming to redeem them. Abraham, Moses, the other ones, they prayed that God would open the doors and let the captives free from Hades. Because Guiana and hell is a different place. You want to remember the people who went before. So we, we like to believe, and since we, we weren't there, and when I was close to that, I never saw that happen. But I would like to know that the scriptures tell us that he released those people. And then he came back because then he said, uh, Thomas, put your hand in my side. Touch the whole. He was changed. He was transfigured. And so he went to there. Or you could say, <clears throat> I just think it's so funny when he was taken away and the angels are sitting next to him. They don't even recognize that the angels are sitting right next to him. And they go, why are you standing here looking up? Didn't he say he'd come again? And when he comes again, he will fulfill all that he told you to do. In other words, you guys go get busy. He told you he was going to leave you. And then one day, and I want to tell you this, the sky will split and Christ will return. And he will call out to those who believe in him and have that nugget of faith rise up in me. And according to the other things that we read this morning, some of us may not live that long. Sometimes the religious world or the world around will kill you and think they're doing God a favor. It's not impossible. It'd be so much easier, Angus, to go. If you put a little more in the offering plate, God will bless your life and you'll go to be with Jesus when you die. Wouldn't that be nice? John, wouldn't that be good if I could just say, just put a little more in the offering plate, sing the songs really good, dress right, and when you die, you just go to be with Jesus and you won't have no problems. If you've got problems because you don't have enough faith, hogwash. I want to tell you every one of those intellectual theologians that said what happened at the Allsbury, Allsbury I shouldn't have had a music pastor named Allsbury that the Asbury seminary wasn't really Jesus or wasn't the right Jesus. I don't need to tell you what the right Jesus is because he saves my soul and I pray to him and he loves me, and he guides me. And you should know him that well, too, because I don't need some preacher going, well, Jesus would never make you laugh uncontrollably. Maybe you need to laugh. Man, I wish there's some sour old Christians that need to laugh. Just get giddy. Just get, I, I just, I haven't done it lately, but you know I'm capable of it. I had a service where all we did was laugh a whole song through. And by the time you're done doing that, you better be happy. Or you're going to be really angry or run out crying because we're supposed to be the most joyful people on this earth. And so if somebody says, well, Jesus, or if someone gets healed, well, they all were going over, well, that's fake. And I want to, I want to apologize right here today for every phony, wow, Bill Thompson, stay in my memory, some phony, beepity beep pastor who faked a healing in a service to glorify themselves. Because the actual matter is God does heal people. He don't need your acclimates. He don't need your praise. He does it according to His will. And I want to tell you this. When God put... i got to get a drink first. I've got a great big roast in the oven at home. And I love roast. So you, trust me, I'm not going to stay here all day. when the Lord put his hand on my neck and brought me back from the edge and said, that's right, you have faith. I was watching the two weeks ago on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, I was watching the revival online while I studied. And the Lord, that, 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 that security that I felt right there came over my lungs. And I went just like this. And I set my rope down on the hook. And I sat there with a straight back. 
and my oxygen stayed over 94% for six whole hours after I, I didn't need any oxygen. I, I stayed. Now, I got you when I had to get up and go to the restroom and come back. I was down at 86, but I want to tell you what a miracle that is because I had not gone without oxygen for 16 months. Something happened in my lungs. Was I completely healed? No, but I thank God for all I get. That's what I can do. I can thank Him for all He's done. I can still be, since that time I've blown to 72 also, and I'm working on one right now. But I had felt the touch of God on my lungs while that was going on, and then I saw those other preachers go, well, that ain't real. That ain't the way the Bible said. I thought so much of the Pharisees. And yes, they did it on the Sabbath. They did it on the Sabbath. They didn't do it the right way. They didn't do it at the right liturgy. They didn't do it. No, I was sitting there at my desk, and the Holy Spirit came on me, and I knew that my lungs got better. Was I completely healed? No, I don't want to make God a liar. I won't tell you that. Yeah, one leg grew three inches. No, I didn't say that. I'm saying that I felt the touch of God, and I've been able to go lengths of time every day that week. I would hang my thing when I started to study, and six hours later, I was good, and I would put it on and go eat. You see, Jesus had so much on his hands to get these guys ready, and he was running out of time, and he said, I'm not going to wring my hands because the Holy Spirit's going to come, but I'm going to try to tell them. And his disciples had so many concepts to grasp. Think about it. God loves the world, but the world hates God. You think you're in trouble when the world clamps down on you for doing what you feel God wants you to do. Do what God wants you to do. The world hates God. It crucified Jesus. This world's no friend of ours. No. And yet we have to love the world like he loved the world. While they were yet in sin, he died for them. Jesus actually was God in the flesh. He, in, he fulfilled the scriptures and became man. And I like to say it like this. He wanted no one to be able to say, you don't understand what it's like, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he walked this earth. He stubbed his toe. He cut his finger. He knows. And how about this, that he would have to die? Well, he should have called 10,000 angels. I would have. I would have. Wouldn't you? I would, if I could have, I would have called 10,000 angels and killed them all. I would have. Save for the love of Christ in my heart. And how about this? He rose again. How am I going to get these 12 guys to figure out that this isn't all there is? Things are not always as they appear. Along with these questions, there were more. I'm going away, but I'll come back in a different form. It is to your advantage that I go away. Yeah, it's really good, but I don't have it anymore. I don't have you here with me, but you're here in spirit. Well, I want you to know the wonder of my spirit. You would never know him the way we know him. Angels long to be in your position to know the spirit of God. You, you may have some impression of what you and who you are when you slip through the veil. But the wonder of his spirit is that nothing matters but him. Nothing matters. The wonder of knowing Christ, the wonder of having him there when you're all alone, the wonder of having him touch your body and heal you, the wonder of him straightening a life out that could have been lost. Just to be saved keeps you out of so much trouble. I want you to receive the gift. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. You don't accidentally get possessed by the Holy Spirit. You ask Him to come into it. the forgiven heart. The revival went through that, th that thing. Sometimes the Word of God got preached, but sometimes, and I've said it, I say it all the time, I want you to preach the Word, the Word of God, and use words sometimes if you have to. You know, preach and use words if you have to. But they would walk in and the Holy Spirit would come on them and they would go into a cycle of repentance. And once they realized that their sins were forgiven, 
they received the Holy Spirit and he allowed them a freedom. I know going through those classes, Angus, when we had to sit in front of our elders and I want you to find the, the, pro the process of sanctification. And in the beginning, I didn't have enough words to keep them at bay. Because God changed my world. Now, how do you explain a miracle that takes place in your heart when the Holy Spirit sets you aside to serve Him and to guide your life and to move ahead? I know what sins forgiven are. I had that. But to take your life and say, from now on, I want to know what Jesus would do in this situation. From now on, I'm not going to respond to you that way because I'm going to pray about it. And God's going to tell me what to do. And if I make a mistake in the spur of the moment, then I'm going to ask forgiveness from my brother. And I'm going to ask God to forgive me too. And I'm going to live my life that way. And as I get smart enough and learn enough moves... I'm not going to make the same mistake I made yesterday because that didn't turn out and the Holy Spirit rewarded me and led me. The pastor is not your Holy Spirit. Your wife is not your Holy Spirit. Your husband is not your Holy Spirit because you better be ready because when you slip through that veil, it's going to be you and him and you got, are you got faith or not. You'll never know the guidance of the Holy Spirit if you don't yield your heart and life to Him. The wonder of the Holy Spirit, the incarnate Jesus, He will be with them forever. The Holy Spirit has kept the church. If it was a religious movement, it would be gone. If the Word of God wasn't the living, breathing, working function of delivering the Holy Spirit to hearts, we'd have thrown it out. The Word became flat, flesh, and He wasn't confined by time, space, and death. Through Christ's victory on the cross, think about it. He is outside of time. You are outside of time. The ageless Jesus Christ. Time and space mean nothing to Him. I'm 66 stinking years old. I never thought that would happen, John. Here I am. But thank God He is outside of time. It all be worth it. Space, from the heart of God to man, there is no, I don't know how far heaven is from here. I know once you slip through that veil, time stops. I could have been unconscious for a week, didn't, I don't know, a couple days at least. Didn't mean anything. And how far did I go? You don't know. You don't know. It's not like I'm driving from here to Seattle and it's going to snow on the way. You're there. And death's not a factor. You realize that once you receive Christ, you're going to live forever in Him, in heaven. And you realize that if you don't receive Christ, you're going to be tormented forever in hell. Yes. Yes, you're an eternal being. I saw one, look like a big football player, I guess he goes, it's about a whale. He said, it's about a whale. I said, what do you mean it's about a whale? Most of the whales that they discover on the beach washed up died from, what do you think? They drowned. They drowned. Whales live in the water, but guess what? Whales have to come up and breathe air. And most of the whales that die drown. You're living, and his story went on, you're living in this world. You're immersed in this world. And you've got to come up for air. You've got to come up and be filled with his spirit to survive. Because if you stay down in that, you know, the, the ocean is toxic. Just drink a cup of it. I don't care. I remember out in the ocean one time, we were in, up in the Arctic Circle, and the water, the thing that kept the milk Old, quit working one of those fountain things that does this and and I was going to fix it for him and so I built a, a table to mount it on and I turned around to get an Angus he was gone and I said Where, where's the fountain thing oh well I threw it away I said well I'm going to fix it he goes well you better get your wetsuit on because it's in the ocean now It's a toxic environment that we live in. 
It's a toxic world that eats stuff to nothingness. They're still trying to find World War II artifacts on the bottom. Some are still there. Some, some are gone. You need to have that <clears throat> infilling of his, the breath of his spirit to make it through the world that we live in today. The wonder of it all, how can you know him? In the Old Testament, man basically knew him from afar. Well, I have to go to Jerusalem, and if I can't go there um, every day, at least I'll go there sometimes, and if I can, I'll go once a year there, and I'll crawl up to the outer holy place and offer a sacrifice of a pigeon or a sheep or a bull, if you're really bad, I reckon. And so you, you, you walk away from there going, oh, wow, I'm glad he, God accepted my gift because the priest, the priest made it holy. Yeah. Everybody worshiped from afar except that priest that was praying, oh, God, I hope I'm good enough to get out of this room. That's why they tied a rope around my leg because if I did something wrong, I'm going to drop dead. They're going to drag my stinky body out of here in a few days. But now we can know him. He's not confined to being walking down the roads of Jericho, not confined to circling the Red Sea, not being in London by himself. The Holy Spirit, the genius, was for him to be able to go all around the world, to meet with people everywhere, to allow the church. I just want to say this again. The Church of the Nazarene is bigger outside the United States than inside the United States. And ain't a white person's religion. It's the Holy Spirit grabbing hearts and washing hearts and bringing them together. I don't know if you're enjoying hearing this, but I'm enjoying telling you, so we're just going to keep going. The just will live by faith. The last wonder, how great is it that you get to live by your faith in Him? And sometimes all you have to do is keep being faithful. The just will live by the faith that you're living by it is in your, you've got it. You've got it. And you get that opportunity to do that. Before the cross, those people longed to have a time when they could worship and walk and talk with the Savior. And after the cross, the angels are going, that's not fair. They get to talk to Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. And we only got him when he's in the inner courts of heaven. It could be like that. It could be. Because we know they're jealous of us. But careful, angel, I'm not making fun of you. Watch as that guy jumps up in the back row and goes, Were you making fun of angels? And you entertained them unaware. Figure that one out. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. He was given for us who didn't see Jesus walk this earth. You can know him. The gift is the catalyst to the solidifying of the new church. They saw Christ in two forms, and I wonder, why did they get to be so fortunate? Because it took a lot in this corrupt and evil world to start the church with the foundation that Jesus did. He chose the people he did, not for their intellectual prowess, but for their personality, for their like and kind, so that he could leave them with a gift of starting the new church. The gift allowed God's work to continue and get done. Yeah, you don't want to be, you didn't want to be Peter. You didn't want to be John. You didn't want to be, you want to be you. That was wonderfully made in your mother's womb. That was designed for the purpose that God intended you for. Design, there's not two of you. Not two of you have the same Inclination, the same personality, the same attributes. Well, what is he doing now? Is the Holy Spirit just sitting around? No. He said he's going to convict the world in regards to sin. There's your scripture for you in verses 8 and 9. He is going to be the convictor. I've heard that from Christians before. You're just preaching so you make them feel bad, and then they'll make a decision. That's not, that's not, that's not Jesus. Jesus wouldn't do that. Jerry Bell taught me this word, hogwash. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but I don't do nothing until I feel miserable about it. And God does a really good job of making me feel miserable about some things, huh, Kathy? So I have to get up and do it. 
Angus may be too many of them. Some of them are not holy things. They're just, I, I just can't be crowded by the Holy Spirit. I had a camp like that. All these kids came to know Jesus, and the instructor got up the next day and goes, the music man got up and said, don't you feel like you have to make a decision for Jesus now because he, he's got the right time for you and don't let anybody talk you into it. I want to tell you this, and I want to tell you this with all my might. If I had to do it again, I might have whooped that guy. Because you need to step near Christ when Christ is near. When you sense the calling of the Holy Spirit, you need to reach out and, and grab onto his garment so that you can be healed and you can know him better. Always seek to know him better. Always seek to reach out for him when he's near. There is an appointed day. It's the day he comes down the road to you. You don't wait for another. I'll wait till Billy Graham Jr. comes to this King Sun Dome or the whatever that is over there now. No, the time to receive Christ is the time when you experience him. Because revival is caught like a virus. Revival is caught by the people who have seen him, who know him. That's why we need to have His Spirit in our midst all the time because we don't know who's going to walk through that door who needs to step close to Jesus and to, to think that you're not going to be a believer unless your name is in somebody else's book or you're not going to be a believer because you didn't follow these simple roads to the gospel. It's hogwash. It's our job to reflect the Holy Spirit that we've been exposed to to one another so that we can fortify each other, so that we can receive healing so we can receive cleansing from us. And some of us need to be lawyers. Some of us need to be electricians. Some of us need to be whatever we are expressing Christ in the way so that someone else can see that and reach out and touch Him. You know, in the old days that used to get an amen. Angus, that used to get an amen. You receive Christ when you sense Him. Because you walk out that door and don't touch his garment now, Satan is going to put a wall up that you may not get over next time. Those kids may go home from camp and get killed on the road by some fentanyl addict. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the opportunity to receive his spirit. Conviction of sin is a good thing. He'll speak and confront the man about Jesus. You've got to deal with Jesus. There's a whole cut in everyone's spirit. I learned this early on when Kathy and I started youth ministries. There's a whole cut in every heart that only the shape of Jesus can fill. Only. You see Christians that aren't happy, they're not letting Christ fill that void in their life. He still needs to be rotated a little bit to get... I've worked on so many pictures for this, animal, this birthday party. You've got to get those pictures just right. Your picture of Christ fits you perfectly. Relations between man and God, they're there for you. They're there for you. They're not for us to tell you how to do it. They're there for the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will make you aware of evil and the finality of life. I don't want to die. Death. That's still too early. When uh, Kathy's dad was dying, I think I got a phone call from the hospital because I didn't go because I didn't want to go there and get something worse than I already had. And they said, Chuck is just tormented. He's just he's, he's seeing things. He's He's so afraid. And I said, well, put him on a phone. And I shared with him that experience that I went through and that I believe my son went through where you've got to have that faith when that Satan torments you to hold up and say, I believe. I believe. And another minister came in to see him too, didn't they? I was the only one. I prayed and and I said, did you know, Karen, that he stopped his torment? And she said, wow, that's right. That's right. Because he was scared to death. Now, I don't 
know my father-in-law's life, Angus, and it's not for me to say. But I know you preach that sermon really well. It doesn't matter when you receive Christ, it's that you do receive Christ. And if it happens on your deathbed, I'm okay with that. But I would rather teach these kids to love him soon and to love him early. Because there's a whole lot of nasty things out there waiting for them that will kill them. And they need to know him early. And even if they don't follow him early, they've bumped up against him. And they'll never be, forget it. They'll never forget it. To live your life to the fullest and don't die. Uh, my engineer one time I was riding in the truck with him. And he goes, well, there you go again. Those preachers are always talking about death and dying. I said, yeah, because we all got to do it someday. Dan, that's why we need to talk about this thing. Yeah, nobody else talked to Dan about that. He was Dutchman. He was Dutchman. He was smarter than that. Van Zwallenberg. Who ever got a name like that? The guidance of the Holy Spirit. He will guide you people into all truth. My eyes have left me here, and I, <clears throat> the gift of life. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundant. The Holy Spirit to guide you down the pathways of life. He will guide you. There's the scriptures. And I, and I got to number three. I got number two. His revelations come day by day rather than all at once. I can't tell you disciples everything you're going to go through. Even the acts of Jesus are too many for the books to, 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 to hold. Thank God we don't know it all at once. And if you don't think that's true, you don't know what all of it's going to be. Because it is that way. Day by day, he brings his songs. Day by day, you hear the bird, you feel the breeze. And he'll never give you much, any more than you can bear. But here's where I live. There is the realm of truth close to the possibility of his guidance. You see, it's on the job training. I like it. When we hired electricians, the guy that just came out of J.M. Perry, he don't know nothing. Come on, man. And I, ain't, I got nothing against J.M.P., but anybody that just goes to school don't know nothing. I remember when I got out of YBC and I certified with my welding rod, all position, all rods. I went to my first job and I said, I am your welding phenom. I am going to do it all. You know what I did? I didn't know nothing. I didn't know how to set a whole bar machine and weld 3 8 inch steel with welding rods bigger than that finger. While you're sitting, we had a tank as big as this room. You had to sit on top on a piece of carpet, strike a bead, and scoot your rear end along the tube as this big barrel was rolling around underneath you. And you stuck that rod down there and you welded and you focused and you kept your bottom moving because if you didn't keep your bottom moving, guess what? You fell off. I didn't know nothing. And that's what it is when you come to Jesus. Maybe you don't know nothing, but it don't matter. You know, I've, I've misused my grammar so much just because of my high school teacher that it's become a habit now. Here's the training. On-the-job training. Coaching, teaching, knowledge, development, learning, experience. On-the-job training. Come and follow me. Let's walk along this road, and before long... Yeah, you're going to learn. You may not know all 23 moves that I've talked to you about, but as we go along, you're going to find the ones that you're inclined to, and you're going to grow. And his guidance is in harmony with the teachings of Jesus, and if I make a mistake or I lead you down the wrong, come and argue with me. Come and point to me. My uh, doctor who... Uh, <coughs> I told that I would die if you cut my oxygen, and he did, and he put me to sleep for two hours, and I went down to 53. He thinks I'm a know-it-all now. I don't care. He ain't never doing that again. Guidance in harmony with his teaching. Let God lead you. It will bring him glory. 
Here's the, one of the things, it's not in my notes, and we're probably, is it one o'clock yet? Is it two o'clock yet? One of, one of the things that I enjoy about following the Lord, about having your steps ordered by the Lord, because when I made a decision years ago, and I was wrong, God doesn't matter. I don't care. Because at the time, He told me to do that. God doesn't make mistakes. I may think, he, who are you thinking, God? No. When God leads you, and it doesn't work out, because you know what? Every state tournament, there's only one winner in one bracket in every weight. Y'all losers. And that's the way we are. We're all losers anyway. So what are you going to get out of this thing? Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the skills that God gives you. The abilities He gave you. Some of you people don't even realize that you're better at prayer than you ever were. Some of you don't even realize. God doesn't make mistakes. So if you know you're holding His hand and you misread something and make a mistake wrong. He loves you. Attempt great things for God. You know? my Well, I don't, I don't want to bear my soul too much here because I've made plenty of mistakes. It comes from being human. It comes from not knowing everything. And God will forgive those things. He doesn't bite his nails in heaven hoping you do it right. He's in heaven wanting to lead you and guide you with his spirit to do it right. Don't cut his ear off, Peter. <laughs> he did. I'll put it back on for you. Leadership of the Holy Spirit brings glory and honor to Jesus. If you love me, keep my commands. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help him. And be for be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, though, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. He won't, how about that, leave you as an orphan? I will come to you. I want to tell you after this, if you don't know him, if you have not experienced the filling of the Holy Spirit, you better. You can. When he's close to you, reach out and grab him. And we don't preach on it much, but heaven is a wonderful place. Filled with glory and grace. I want to be there and I want to see my Savior's face. Because it's a wonderful place. Heaven is beyond our imagination. And I don't think you get many looks at it because you would be awestruck and not do what he's asked you to do in the time that you have while you're swimming in this ocean. Come up for him. Allow him to fill you. Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your love for us. I just right now pray that your spirit would be in our midst. That we would reach out and touch you. That we would allow you in our hearts to do all that you can do. It's not make-believe. It's not force. It's allowing you, Lord Jesus, set us aside to serve you. Forgive us for the times that we've failed you. God, we have to let people know that you're living in our lives or we hide our light underneath a bush underneath a basket and no one can see it in the short hours and days that we've been given allow us to let your light shine so that other people will know and that our lives will be a testimony to your saving grace father today if there's anyone here that needs to experience you in a new way i ask you to raise your hand right now and i'll pray for you I'll never call you out i will just remember you in prayer See that? Anybody else? I see that. Anybody else? Before we go, in just a moment, we'll just all pray for you this week. Anointing of the Holy Spirit. I see that hand. We're not in a hurry, people. We're not in a hurry. I see that hand. Anybody else? Heavenly Father, continue to make yourself so real to us. 
God, forgive us for the times that we don't reach out and touch. Father, guide and direct our hearts as we worship you in our spirits. Help us to go into a world that's angry at us. And we know why now, because you said they would be. And they crucified you, so there you go. Heavenly Father, we just pray your blessing upon us now. Go in your name and keep us totally in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love one another. Yes.